good morning, hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are. It's currently like half seven in the morning and I'm on the way to the train station to get a train to Central to go on this morning. I'm so excited and scared, but also excited. Excuse the noise. I'm not sure if it's the fact that I had vodka last night or I just haven't really slept because of the heat. But I feel really sick. There might be nerves too. Goodness. But I'm feeling really ill. So I'm currently in the toilets at ITV Studios. Um, they've just told me that we're going to do a run through and then they're going to record at like 9.45, which means it's going to be pre-recorded to go on the show. So it's not actually going to be live, which is, it makes me feel a lot more relaxed actually. So it doesn't matter what I say, I, they can always redo it. And it doesn't matter if I make a mistake, so. More relaxed now. So, how are they doing after the long winter, and uh, and how are they dealing with the scorching weather? Uh, to tell us, we've got uh, this morning beekeeper Tom Oliver. Uh, he's here, although he's been very brave and not even you bothering with a hat. You are living on the edge, Tom. Why have you not got a hat on? I will in a sec. You will. Do you will in a sec. I'm all right now. Oh, I feel all namby pamby now. <laughs> Yeah, and, but you've uh, got a good reason. Well, I have, because just over there, we've got our paramedics. They're going to make sure that I stay alive, because I am severely allergic <laughs> to being wasp stings. Well, we had a bit of a chat about this earlier, so I know what to do. Yeah, but you're the... Yeah, we do. You do know what to do. It's butt cheek. Yeah. And it, and, and it doesn't go through clothes, so you need a full debagging. You have to debag me, and... Uh, <laughs> Honestly, if this happens, full on in the we cheek. will keep rolling. It's fine. Actually, I'm go sure for my you... thigh. Do me a favour. Do in go for thigh. my thigh. And you're the one that's panicking. Well, I know, but that's well because I had that honey and they sort of started flying at me slightly, but it's fine. Yeah, they can I'm read the label. So, so, anyway. uh, so what have they been up to since um, since last year? Well, through the winter they would have gone into a, a form of hibernation where they're very inactive and just sort of stay in a bundle and keep their temperature about 20 degrees through the winter to keep everything warm, but they wouldn't be flying. Right. And then as we come through the spring, as soon as it hits about 14 degrees in, say, February, March, they'll start flying again and they'll start building up the numbers and start to store some honey. And are these the same bees that we had last year, or are yes. these new bees? No, they've done very well and actually survived through winter, which oh, is good. some colonies won't, um, but these have been very strong. So oh, well, that's how, how much honey will they make? Uh, last year, I know that you didn't do so well, but this year, per box should be about 22 kilograms of honey, and each of them have got two, so that's about 88 so far, oh, so it might go up to 100. Because we had a few issues last year, didn't we? Yeah, just like um, disease problems are quite persistent in bees anyway, and these ones, I believe, had um, a paralysis virus, which can wipe out a colony if not yeah. treated. And the queen, we had a problem with the queen? Yeah, the queen um, was, I think, replaced. Oh, um, was she? Oh, oh my God. goodness, she's overthrown. Yes. Oh, wow. That's um, what they do sometimes. Well, we're obviously, they are city urban bees. Um, a lot of people think that being the city, you won't generate as much honey, but actually, London's pretty good for bees. Yeah, it tends to be that sometimes in the cities you produce more than in the country, because in the country you'll have fields of just one crop, um, and then when, it, when it's gone, that's it. But in London, because there's so many different trees and bushes and gardens, they can get a really varied source of pollen. Ours is so tasty. Yeah. It's beautiful. Depending on where you are, it must be something delicious. To I don't want the, What is delicious really, around here? <laughs> really floral. Um, so um, so they, they cope all right in the heat, do they? Yeah, actually, they love it. it. Once it gets to, say, 40 degrees, which hopefully it won't, then they start to struggle. But with our temperatures, they should be fine. As long as they've got water nearby, they'll be great. So how can you make your garden at home more bee-friendly, if you'd like to? If you... Usually, most people, if you leave, like, a, a patch where you don't mow the lawn, and so you get some wildflowers in, like, a meadow section, that's usually very good for bees, because it'll be um, crops that will flower at different times of the year, so they'll yeah. get pollen all year round. So and, and they're not easy to set up. You can't just think, oh, I want to keep bees and, and just do it. No, there's quite a lot. I highly recommend going to some associations and learning a bit about it before you do. But then actually when you come to getting them, there's a lot to buy, like yeah. all the boxes okay. and then the bees themselves need to come in the post. So there's a lot to think Can about. We Can we have, have a, look? a little look and see yeah, what, sure. what they've been making? Oh, now he puts oh, the I see hat on. You do. So how, what do you do? Do you just open it up? You've got a smoker thing, haven't you? Yeah, I've got a smoker with me, which when the bees have been smoked, they Basically, they think their hive's on fire, and so they'll go and start eating all the honey, ready oh. to leave. So they're occupied eating, and oh, they usually gorge no, themselves. Oh, no, I don't like the sound of that. Um, and so they won't fly up and get us. So the top box, which I'll open now, this is where all the honey's kept. So we'll see how they've been doing. Ooh! This goes against everything. It doesn't feel right. I am the one that's allergic. <laughs> and that doesn't mean you get, like, the trump card on being scared of bees. So there we go, that's full. Oh my wow. goodness! Is that, so that's, Look at that's that. the honeycomb, and that's all. And they put those sort of waxy plug things over the end. Yeah. So to keep the... once it's sealed like that with wax, that means it's ready to go. So and where are all the guys? babies? Uh, this, they're not in this box. They're in the bottom box. Oh, they're in the bottom, are they? So this one's just the top two will just be honey. Yeah. Um, 
and then I'll just double check the outside. Because if the outside's full too, that means it's completely full. I need and to does get that mean we can box. collect the honey if it's full? Yeah. So this is the final frame isn't fully capped. Yeah. So right. once that's done, we can take these boxes off and then get some honey out. Oh, oh I see. Busy oh, and do, do they not think, where the hell did all that go? <laughs> We've spent ages making that. The honeybees tend to produce way too much. Right. And so because they, just in case something drastic happens, so we can take some and then as long as we make sure they have left with a little bit, they're perfectly all right. Well, oh, Phil going to be well, well cooking well done, with that well a little bit later on. Where, uh, how long before we can start getting honey out of this? Probably a couple of weeks, a uh, week or two with this. Oh, weather, really? Actually. Yeah. Well, Great. Thank you, Gosh, that's really soon. Look forward to it. Thank you Love very it. much. There you go. You're welcome. Right, while we make our way downstairs, here's Amazing. what's coming up. Amazing morning. I'll definitely, definitely insert some clips of me on this morning because it was so fun. Holly and Philip are just like, it's just like chatting to your friends. They're so cool. So, I mean, I was going to say relaxed, but they weren't. They were a bit scared of the bees. Philip, understandably, because he's allergic, but Holly, not so much. But it was still really fun to do. Really, really cool. So I might insert a clip. I might insert the whole clip, actually, because it was so cool. So you can see it. But now I'm just off to do the second site of the day, carry on beekeeping, um, and hopefully stay cool from this weather. It is unbearably hot in a bee suit in this weather. Very sweaty. But I did that site. So only one more site to do. That's four hives left. I'm so sweaty. Though. Look how wet I am. Gross. So I'm going to have a drink, chill out in the little breeze that we've got go to the last site and then I'll be done for the day and I can go home and chill. Back at home, phone died so we couldn't vlog anymore. Just had some lunch because I hadn't eaten yet and we're waiting for the shopping to be delivered so that'll be the next thing I do. And then after that, probably just editing a vlog and tidying the house because uh, a family friend of Martha's family is coming over to stay with us for a couple of days because she's got some conferences to do here in London so she'll be staying with us. When I was out with the bees, I did get stung twice because, you know, that's what happens. But look at my ankle. I mean, the camera doesn't do it justice, but up here it looks way different. So you've got normal ankle. Wait. You've got normal ankle. And you've got a big fat ankle. I suppose you can see it because you can't really see the bone protruding as much as it should be on my ankle bone. Just sort of swollen up compared, like. You see the little red dot? That's where the stinger went in. And my whole foot's all swollen. If that's not why you subscribe to my channel, I don't know what, what you're here for. Because this is fucking cool. I don't really think you're straight. <laughs> I think using a gorilla pod for this was a bad idea, but there you go. I thought I'd just sit down with you and just have a quick chat about the um, about going on this morning and how come I was able to do that. So the guys whose hives they are, I help them out. I'm a volunteer that gives them a hand because I love beekeeping. They don't pay me anything. I just enjoy doing that. I've been doing beekeeping since I was like 14 because my grandparents did it when they were for like 50 years and then I took over from them when they couldn't do it for a few years and I got interested in it I've kept doing it and since moving to uni I've found ways of keeping up beekeeping and it just so happens that one of those sites that I look after was on ITV Studios the two guys whose hives they were were busy and so they asked me to do it I said yes so that's how I was able to do that and it was really fun and I'd love to do something like that again because I really enjoyed doing that it was really nerve-wracking and exciting before it but just doing it and chatting with Philip and Holly was really fun and really nice and they're so friendly so I'd happily do something like that again because it was super fun. So I've just done a bit of tidying, Martha's gone to MS to get a late Father's Day gift for her dad because he's also going back tonight and the family friend will be arriving hopefully within the hour actually. So we're in bed now, no duvet again tonight because it's so warm, tomorrow's supposed to be raining, maybe a thunderstorm and then the weather's gonna calm down a bit, it's gonna be a bit cooler so hopefully get a bit more done. I felt like I haven't slept properly either because of this heat, so looking forward to a decent night's sleep. Ah, what are you doing? Anyway, just going to end the vlog here. Hope you've had a good day, no matter what you've been doing. And thanks for using a segment of your day to watch a segment of mine. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.